Hi guys, this lecture is looking at um, how useful is secondary data in sociological research, um, looking at the GCSE's curriculum. Um, so when examining the usefulness of um, a research method, you need to consider, consider these different standards. Um, is the research method practical or not? Is it particularly ethical? How reliable is the method? Is the method repre representative of the target population? Can you generalise the findings? And is the method valid? Is it going to give you valid data? Um, and I will talk to you a little bit about mixed methods at the end of the lecture, which is one of the solutions to perhaps a very unreliable method. You might be able to think of another method that would be reliable that you could do as well. OK, so let's have a look at secondary data and the different variations. So um, you have documents and you've got statistics. Those are the two different types of secondary data. And then you have variations within them. So uh, for documents, you have things like personal documents. So for example, a diary, a personal diary, um, or maybe personal letters. Um, and I would also argue that perhaps a Facebook profile or an Instagram profile would also uh, qualify as a, um, a personal document. Um, they will contain mainly qualitative um, data, okay, because it's a document. Um, and um, like a Facebook profile, things even things like photos count as uh, if you like documents because obviously you can look at doc, you can look at photos and gain an insight into people's lives and people's worlds. Um, <clears throat> you also have uh, what's known as official documents. So I've got an official letter there. Um, they would be very standardised, uh, but they would also contain some personal data. So an official letter might be something from I don't know social services. It could be an official letter from the courts. It could be a, a government letter. Um, it could be a bill. Those are all official documents and they're likely to contain a mixture of quantitative and qualitative data, um, but predominantly qualitative. It's a letter. And of course, there are also what's known as historical documents. Um, so, yeah, these can be old government records. Um, they can be uh, past Ofsted reports um, uh, and they can be, uh, you know, even um, historical documents that also include newspapers and um, or articles, news articles written online. Uh, sorry, official documents that also include an Ofsted report about a school. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then the other type of secondary data is um, what's known as statistics. Um, and you get official statistics, which are ones uh, produced by government agencies. They're can produced regularly, um, normally at the same points in the year. And they're collected in the very same or similar way. Uh, and you also get things known as unofficial statistics, and they can be collected by private companies or charities. Um, so at the below there, I've given the example of crime statistics on the left. Okay, um, I think that's actually European data on perhaps robber the level of robbery um, in different places. And on the, the right, I've given you the example of um, food bank usage um, that would have been collected by um, one of the food bank tr uh, trusts, um, uh, looking at whether how it's increased and what type of use it's increasing in. Um, when it comes to um, analysing official statistics, um, they are e or, or even unofficial statistics, they are easy, they're all quantitative, it's easy to spot patterns. Um, you could look at, I don't know, robbery rates and go, oh look, robbery rates are really, really high in London, therefore London is a much more dangerous place to live. Um, so that's what's known as a snapshot of what's going on. Um, but what they don't really tell you is perhaps why robbery is much higher in London. You might say, oh, it's because there's more people. Um, it might be because there's more um, poverty in London. Um, it could be um, because it, lifestyles are more expensive in London. You know, those sorts of issues. You can't really get that from statistics. You'd have to use other methods to uncover the why. So that's one of the problems with statistics. Um, and when it comes to analysing documents, so qualitative documents or written documents like letters and diaries, for example, you're more likely to use a method uh, known as content analysis. Uh, and content analysis um, is a way of looking and reading a document and perhaps trying to draw patterns from it. Um, so a good example, and this is one that I would like some of you to have a go at, is um, perhaps go on, I don't know, The Guardian website or maybe the BBC News website and um, count or even if you can get hold of them, um, an actual newspaper would be great. OK, so if you've got a newspaper in the house, maybe go and grab one now and go through and count how many articles are written by male journalists and how many are written by female journalists. 
Um, and what you're doing there is you're actually getting quantitative data from a qualitative written document because you're counting how many male and how many female journalists there are. And at the end of reading through, I don't know, the first page of um, whether it's a page or online or the whole of the newspaper, you should be able to tell me whether there are more male or female journalists uh, in being published and what implications there are if there's more male than female or more female than male. What does that tell us about society? Okay, so that's how you'd analyze documents. Okay, whereas statistics, you'd look for patterns and trends. So let's have a quick look at uh, how useful or not useful secondary data is. So secondary data is considered very practical because the data already exists. You're using information that's already out there. It's been created by um, the partic by um, by members of the public or by official bodies. Uh, so it's really cheap, okay, because it already exists. You haven't got to go out there and collect it yourself. Quite a lot of official secondary data is available for free online, okay? Uh, particularly official statistics, so things like, you know, examination um, results for a school you can uh, or schools in the area. You can find out looking at league tables, you know, how many A's or, sorry, how many 9's and 8's they got. You can find out how many students didn't reach their targets. You can find out patterns by gender, for example, um, or crime statistics, all available free online. Um, and official statistics are quantitative, okay? Um, so they're really easy to spot patterns and trends, okay? Really easy to spot patterns and trends. Secondary data, um, particularly statistics, are generally considered ethical. Um, so most official statistic data or unofficial statistic data uh, is completely anonymous. So you don't have names next to the data. You don't know who it, whose data has been produced. So crime statistics, you don't get a list of who committed the crimes. You just get how many people, how many crimes that took place. Um, uh, data on achievement in schools. Again, you don't get a list of which kids got what grade. You just get the number of grades each school managed to get. So it's completely anonymous. Um, uh, and then that, people would argue, therefore, that makes it quite ethical. Um, also, of course, if you're using, you know, newspaper documents, for example, newspapers, that's ethical because, you know, journalists write articles, um, you know, that, you know, to be published. They're already in the public domain. Um, second data in terms of official statistics are considered very, very reliable because they are collected by government agencies that collect them in exactly the same way each time. Although there can be a few variations in that, which I'll talk to you about shortly. OK, so official statistics, highly reliable okay, and really useful, really, because if they're collected the same way every time, you can actually then look for patterns over a year, two years, three years or what have you. And I've just noticed quickly the error with the validity, and I've just changed that very quickly. That was from a previous lecture. Um, when it comes to um, validity, um, documents particularly personal documents, can be considered valid. Um, um, if someone's writing personal letters or writing in a diary, they are likely to um, not maybe lie or deceive because they don't expect that document to be read by someone else. Um, official statistics can be considered lacking in validity because they don't really paint a detailed picture of what's going on. Um, however, some would say, look, they're really objective, um, they clearly identify patterns, and that is a valid way of researching society. So in terms of secondary data, um, it's not considered useful. Um, there are some practical issues. Um, uh, they are considered quite practical, but some practical issues can take place, particularly with diaries and letters. So personal documents um, and some official documents, you need to get through a gatekeeper so to gain access. That could be the owner of those documents or the relatives of the people who own those documents. Or it could be if they're company documents or government documents, you might need to gain access if they're not in the public domain. So that can be a bit of an issue, particularly if some of the information might be you know, um, upsetting or uh, damaging to the reputation of the organisation. Um, diaries and letters, of course, are qualitative or historical documents are qualitative. So that will take a lot of time to analyse. Um, even if you're going to do that method content analysis, it still takes time to go read through the documents and count how many times that those um, whatever you're looking for appears. Or if you're doing more of a, a trying to gain insight and interpret documents, that will take a lot of time. Uh, and in terms of, again, this is a, an issue of access, I guess, companies or the government may not want to release documents that are particularly negative um, or they may withhold particularly harmful statistics. OK, so you might not be able to gain access to everything which will affect uh, ultimately the validity of your research. Um, oh, sorry. Um, 
ethical issues, um, well, personal documents, um, if you have managed to gain access to those personal documents, uh, they may contain sensitive information. Um, if you are conducting research on personal or historical documents of people who have perhaps passed away, um, they haven't given you direct permission to access that. So that can be a bit of an ethical issue. Um, and yet, if you have to gain access to personal documents of people who have passed away, particularly if it's recent, maybe they passed away um, due to a crime or, or what have you, gaining access to those personal documents can actually upset maybe the, the, the family members who are left behind. And remember, as I said in my previous slide, personal documents can also include things like Facebook profiles, Instagram profiles, messages, emails and what have you as well. OK, um, so that can be a bit of an ethical problem. So. In terms of representative issues, um, they are uh, secondary data, secondary official statistics are considered highly re representative. Sorry, I've left that off the green side on the left. But yeah, official statistics are considered highly representative because they cover a huge amount of the population normally, uh, got whole areas, a whole country, for example. So highly representative. However, documents can take much longer to analyse, so slightly less representative um, if you're using just documents, official documents or personal documents. Um, and then finally, I want to talk to you about validity. Um, so, like I said, when it comes to statistics, um, statistics don't tell you why a pattern occurs. They are just a snapshot of what is happening. So, I don't know, you might look at league tables and say, oh, look, it looks like um, boys are doing less well than girls in GCSE. Or you might say working class students seem to be underperforming compared to middle class students. Um, so if you just had statistics, you would say, right, that means all boys are less clever than girls. And you might say, oh, that must mean the working class is less clever than the middle class. Now, that's clearly not what's going on. Uh, to find out why boys might be doing less well or why working class students are doing less well, you actually need to do other types of research to figure out what's really going on. Like, What are the things getting in the way of those students doing as well as perhaps their richer peers or richer classmates? OK, so secondary data, particularly statistics, is a great starting point for research, but they doesn't really give you enough information to kind of really find out what's going on. Um, again, if you're talking about personal documents, people may lie and exaggerate in personal documents like diaries and letters as well. Um, people, if they're even if they're recording in their own diary, that's only their version of events. So they might decide that everyone's against them and, you know, nothing to do with them, that something awful happened. And, you know, you only get that one sided opinion in a diary or a letter. Uh, and, you know, of course, the Facebook and Instagram profiles can't exactly be tra trusted as valid uh, and true representations of someone's life because you only put your best life online. And then um, in terms of statistics, as as I was saying about the issue with reliability and validity here, to be honest with you, is it's quite hard sometimes to compare statistics because um, they might be using invalid definitions if words have changed. So, for example, the definition of unemployment, the government has changed the definition of unemployment, gosh, almost hundreds of times in the past century. So, for example, unemployment uh, used to mean if you were seeking um, a, a job, um, it's in the past, it's also it's meant only people who are on job seekers allowance. So that wouldn't include any young people who are seeking jobs after university. Um, unemployment in the past has, has only been people who have been unemployed for six weeks or more. So if you're looking at official statistics and the definitions of the words are changing, that makes it really difficult to understand what's really going on. Uh, and finally, I just want to talk to you briefly about mixed messages. Um, methods that are high in sort of reliability and representativeness are often very low in validity. So using more than one method can make up for the weakness in the other and help create much more accurate research. Quite often, if you do a quantitative research method, you might want to supplement that research with a qualitative research method. So you might pick a method that questionnaires, which is quantitative, which is reliable and very representative, but lacks validity, lacks that kind of in-depth insight that qualitative data might uh, uh, give you. So you might do unstructured interviews to kind of gain a bit more insight. So if you can have a go at this activity, slightly different to the previous ones. If you choose uh, to use participant observation, what other method might you use to make up for the weaknesses of participant observation? So what are the main weaknesses of participant observation and what method would make up for that weakness? Thanks for listening.